Yo, what's up everybody, it's boy Jed here, and I really like Spider-Man. He's not only my favorite Marvel hero, but also my favorite superhero in general. It doesn't matter if it's games, movies, comics, hell, I used to wake up in the morning when I was really little, like 4, 5, or 6, and I used to watch Spider-Man and his amazing friends growing up. Yeah, that Spider-Man show from the 80s that nobody seems to fucking remember, I remember it. I even have a Spider-Man pillow, bro. That is not a joke either. That's just how much I love Spider-Man. And 2018 saw the release of Marvel's Spider-Man for the PS4, a massive open-world game following a Spider-Man who's in his eighth year as Spider-Man in the game developed by Insomniac as well as Miles Morales in 2020, a much smaller spin-off and follow-up game focusing on the titular character Miles. And one of the most hyped PS5 announcements was the release of its sequel, Spider-Man 2. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Let's talk about it, shall we? So instead of going through the story beat by beat, explaining how I feel and discussing how I feel about things like gameplay and music and whatnot, I'm instead gonna do what I did with my initial Frontiers video, where instead of discussing everything, I discuss a select few of the issues that I had with the game. So it goes without saying that there will be spoilers for the entire game. So if you either haven't played it or haven't beaten it, here's your spoiler warning. If you wish to continue, you have been warned. Now I'm going to start with the biggest one since it's going to take a while to get through. And that's Peter Parker. Yes, the entire character because Insomniac Peter is a CERTIFIED FROG! In the first game, he had a few fraud moments here and there, and at the start of Miles Morales, he had a definitive fraud moment with Rhino, but overall, he was mostly that guy. But after this game, nah, this, 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 this nigga is just straight up washed up, bro. This nigga Pete actually needs to pack up the suit, dude, because despite having nine years of experience, he spends the entire game getting his shit rocked and needing to be saved because he's a fraudulent bum and just can't make and just to make it clear how fraudulent of a bum he is i'm going to go through every single time he catches a fraud charge in chronological order starting with fucking sandman and this is a somewhat bad one because a this peter is now more than nine years in the game as spider-man and has faced this very sandman once before the only new things now are that he's larger than last time, and he can clone himself now. He's bigger, whoop the fucking do, PD. He gets overrun by clones twice throughout the fight, and Miles needs to save him. The first time is one thing, but it happens twice. The first time he saves himself with the spider arms, and the second time he needs to be saved by Miles. And the only reason that one is stupid is because he was able to get him off him once before. So, if you're able to get them off you once, you can get him off you twice, buddy. But that's not the only time Miles needed to save Peter or cover his ass in this very fight. And after downing Sandman the first time, somehow, some way, Peter is the one who gets caught by the Storm Flint Maid, and then Miles gets away. Which makes no sense to me, because how was Miles able to get away but Peter wasn't? Even though Miles does not have reflexes as good as Peter. Peter's been doing this for nine years, and Miles has been doing this for one year. And Peter's fought Sandman before. Why are you struggling this hard against someone you have fought before, you bum ass bitch? <laughs> Fraud charge number two, he gets attacked by a hunter beast after breaking into one of Craven's bases, which I can't let go despite it attacking him while he was talking because this Peter has shown he can very much move while running his mouth. He does it the entire time with Sandman. Is this me being petty? Absolutely. My video, my rules. Moving on to the third time he catches a fraud charge, which comes after breaking into Craven's party, because after incapacitating Craven's tiger and sneaking into his room, he goes to leave. And this big ass bastard walks into the room and he only gets caught because he, instead of doing the logical thing of jumping above the door or to the roof, this imbecile decides to jump to the window. And the only reason that's a charge is simply for the fact that the tiger's a little ways into the room and the big bum leaves the door open. Hey, Petey boy, go through the door! The next major fraud charge comes during the entire sequence where he struggled with the lizard. 
And the only reason it's kind of a fraud charge is because despite the fact that this litter lizard is harder and stronger than before, he is too because he has the symbiote, which canonically makes him stronger and faster and tougher. And B, he has the spider sense. And the spider sense is a lot stronger than it get portray gets portrayed, not even just in this game, but in a lot of external media. It should get activated a lot more than it does. He should not be struggling like this. But just to give you an idea of how strong the spider sense actually is, in some of the comics, if I can find them, I'll throw them up on screen. In one, Craven attacks Spider-Man solely because he has good reflexes and good senses. So he decides to throw a bunch of, bunch of flashbangs at him, which blinds him. And since flashbangs make some noise, his hear- and flashbangs make noise when they go off. His hearing is extremely distorted as well. And Craven attacks, but because the spider sense is so strong, Craven still struggles to hit him. Mind you, he is blinded and has his hearing severely distorted. He can't hit him despite this. That's how strong the spider sense is. Spider sense is the only reason he's able to swing the way that he does, subconsciously telling him where to aim. One time Peter was blinded and not only disarms the warhead, but as it since it's still heading down to the city. But because of how powerful the spider sense is, it literally lets him see the danger and to get it into a place that nobody would get injured. It basically works the same way Daredevil's vision does and sight does. Because Daredevil, if you never are aware, is blind, but he can, because his other senses are so heightened, he can still see things. It can also tell him not only that other people are endangered, but it can even warn him of space-time disturbances. That's how strong the spider sense is. Peter can be completely disoriented, and because of the spider sense, he's able to dodge anything. So, yeah, fraud charge. Next up on the list? It comes a bit of a ways, but it comes from the Miles fight with Peter. And even if I can let the sequence if in its entirety go, because Miles is aware of the symbiote's weakness to noise now, and during the fight he constantly uses the veil to disable and discombobulate Peter, I'm adding this to the list solely because there are a few times during the fight where Miles doesn't ring the bell, so Peter isn't under the effect of the bell, the symbiote's weakness to the bell. And under zero circumstance is Miles stronger than a symbiote buff Peter who has nine years of experience to his one year at most. Miles also basically does all of the work and Peter does literally nothing until the very end. Oh, but the symbiote was fighting him and controlling him. Okay, did that stop him any other time? You know, when he didn't have Miles helping him fight the symbiote off? No, so shut up. Peter's getting put on fraud watch for this simply because he had to get carried to the finish line by someone with one year under his belt as Spider-Man compared to his near decade long run at. Do something, you buffoon. Don't just stand there looking gooey. After this though, he doesn't catch a fraud watch charge until the end of the game, simply because any interaction he has with Venom after he gets the anti-venom suit, simply because any time he interacts with Venom after getting the suit, Venom should not be an issue because his power is a direct counter to Venom's. But I'm only gonna do one, and that's the final boss, since I believe they only interact once between him getting the anti-venom power and the final boss. That final boss is easily the worst on this list because anytime Peter has a physical interaction with Venom, he should be dumping him with anti-venom. I don't care that this is basically King and Black Venom, who is hella strong. Peter's power is a direct counter to anything he can do to him. And this bum somehow, some way, gets incapacitated by Venom and knocked out for the entire second half of the fight and Miles needs to save the day. You are a direct counter to anything he can do to you. You should not be struggling with him the way that you are. There is zero defense for it. It is unacceptable in any way, shape, and form. Miles should not need to save the day like this. You are a direct counter to him. It might not be an easy fight, simply because Venom in the game is as strong as King of Black Venom, and as we've established, King of Black Venom is strong as shit, but you are 110% coming out on top with zero assistance. That's six times. Six times that he counts fraud charges. Six times. It happening once or twice is fine, but six, where five of those six are actual big times, 
not okay. Admittedly, that's my only issue with the story, but it occurs too many times for me to ignore. Other than that, every other issue I have is a very minor gameplay problem, and the first one is the missions where you play as someone who isn't one of the Spider-Men, with two exceptions. Now, one of my biggest issues with the first game was the multiple MJ missions in the game, because they were long, tedious, and generally boring. They were far and above the worst aspect of the entire game. But in this game, they're much shorter, faster, feel less intrusive, and are actually much more enjoyable this time around. I just don't much care for them. Like, there's one in the side mission where you play as Miles' deaf girlfriend Haley, and the sound effects have this super muffled effect to it. It's actually really cool. I just don't care much for this mission, nor do I care about Haley. I don't even dislike her or anything, I straight up just do not care about her at all. So despite the cool effect on the sound and the sweet ending to the story of the mission, I was bored for most of that mission and that's how I feel about most of them. The only ones that I fuck with like that are the end game mission with MJ, specifically the second half because that shit had me tense bro. Especially when the giant symbiote monster shows up and you have to fight it. As, and as soon as I saw Run appear on my screen, bro, I knew it was time to go, dog. They cooked with that MJ mission. And the other mission I mess with where you don't play as one of the Spider-Man is the Venom mission. Because that mission is just amazing. One of my favorite parts of the Ultimate Spider-Man game from 2005 was playing as Venom. So, getting to play as Venom in this game and just run through these peasant bitches. Felt way too good. Oh, and don't even get me started on the Craven fight, dude. That shit was sick. And the ending, man, that was brutal. But it felt so good to watch. My final real issue with the game is simply that Peter isn't that fun to play without the symbiote. Playing as Peter without the symbiote is fine, and the spider arms are cool, but it gets boring a lot faster, as opposed to, say, Miles, who feels so good to play, especially with his boosted bioelectricity powers. And the symbiote Peter is far and above the best to play. He hits hard and can power through a lot, he's smooth, he feels so good to play, and his symbiote surge mode literally just turns into a god, and it looks and feels so good to just beat ass with no restraint. I wish they spent more time making regular Peter as fun to play as Miles and Symbiote Peter, but those are my only real issues with the game. And despite my bitching, I really do love this game. It's a great game with a lot of fun side content and storylines, amazing combat, a solid suit collection that I can't wait to see how much it gets updated, probably the second best web swing in a Spider-Man game, the beautiful edition of the web wings, and even with the few issues I had here and there like with bugs and crashes, this game is a shitload of fun. I'm currently working my way to platinum in the game, but until they add a new game plus and the ability to replay missions without having to start the entire game over, I honestly don't ever see myself coming back to the game once I do get it. Though considering the game is absolutely getting DLC, I can't wait to see what they do with it and how it plays out. Hey, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. I'm glad I could get my thoughts out on the game in a decent time frame. I know I spent a lot of this video bitching. But this game really is an absolute blast in every way. I know this video probably got a lot of heat for my bitching, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm gonna stop wasting your time now. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, you can tell me much I suck, both the YouTuber and the VTuber in the comment section down below. Alright! Peace out and enjoy yourself, people. Wondering just the long as death from birth. Fly just like a burning piece of cures all the life of thoughts in my mind. Man, I need a purge. Southside choppers, classic with the vibe. Keep me off the edge till the brother getting locked up. Spark to lock up, chilling with the rider. Keep me off the edge till the brother getting